for us to understand how do we induce alpha brain waves, what we need to do is we need to understand there's about five different things that we need to do. And none of them have got to do with a university, a PhD, or an MBA. None of them. Because that part of our world is now becoming totally demonetized and democratized by AI. Now, I'm going to talk about meditation, which is so funny that you were here before me. But meditation is one of them. And I want to tell you quickly that if you can't meditate because your brain is too busy, it's not. You're just addicted to a high beta brain wave and you think a tiger is going to come eat you. So why would you want to sit still for 10 minutes? That's what's happening. That's what your story is telling you. And your brain is confirming to you that you can't sit still for 10 minutes because your brain is too busy. So what you're trying to say is that my brain is slow, which is not true. But you haven't trained yourself to be able to understand how important it is to move from beta to alpha. So this meditation story is not some lentil eating, sandal wearing, hippie kind of... This is a Bloomberg ideology. These are all Bloomberg documentaries talking about meditation and how important they are. This is about making more money, better decisions, and being collaborative in the world ahead of us. It's not about becoming spiritual or whatever the case may be. And let's remember something. Prayer, as important prayer is, prayer is talking to God. Meditation is listening to God. It's a very different skill set that we have to start to adopt. And so... Meditation is really the first step that we can take to just 10 minutes a day, morning and evening, to be able to calm the heart and clear the mind so we can approach the world with more fascination and more curiosity. Two, trauma healing. Many of us never ever access any sort of trauma healing, but what trauma does, it gets our brain to look for danger, not curiosity. And when we are looking for danger, you're not adaptable, your EQ is not high, and you're not making decisions for the future, but you're making defensive decisions about the past. Three, how many of you here have got a reverse mentor? Do you know what a reverse mentor is? It's a 21-year-old that tells you what the hell's going on out there in the world. Because we don't know. As adults, we don't. Who here knows Mr. Beast? Thank you. That's great. Mr. Beast. Who doesn't know Mr. Beast? Okay, you, okay, you need a reverse mentor. A reverse mentor is somebody between 16 and 25 who can explain to you what's cool, what's not cool, what they're watching, what they're not watching, what they're eating, what they're not eating, what brands they're wearing, what brands they're not wearing. And these people are golden for us because I learned about Mr. Beast who's bigger than Netflix and Disney combined, one 25-year-old kid from the States. Please go look up Mr. Beast. And I only learned about Mr. Beast because of my reverse mentor. So you've got to get yourself a coach that's between 20 and 25 years old to just explain to you what's going on out there. Because guess what? We're moving into their world. They're not coming into our world. Three, play. Now, as adults, we never prize to play. You don't have time for play. You have to do the serious things that adults do. But we have now proven that if you stop playing, your brain stops being adaptable. And I don't have the time to go take you through the research, but without play, without laughter, without engaging with people besides an addiction to certainty and work, our brain starts to concrify. And as our brain starts to concrify, adaptability starts to slow down. And lastly, active imagination. And what we do without even realizing it, we use our imagination in the worst way possible. Now, before I tell you about that, it was Einstein who said it best. He said, imagination is more important than knowledge. It is the forthcoming attractions to life. And so what do we do because we're in a high beta brainwave fueled with adrenaline and we catastrophize the future, prepare for all danger in the world. Our brains get stuck to old stories from the past and not stories into the future. And what starts to happen, we do imagination, but in the worst way possible called anxiousness. And anxiousness never allows us to think about a positive future we're moving into. But what active imagination does, and if again, if I had more time, I'd show you, there's a video that shows people that are actively imagining the world ahead of us and neurons that are wiring and firing for the very first time, creating that form of brain in our heads because our ability to sit quietly and actively imagine a world ahead of us.